We're going to be talking about circular design. What is circular design? How are people uh, applying it? And we're also going to be talking quite specifically about uh, an exciting challenge or design brief that's been put out there um, in a collaboration between uh, the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, RSA and Phillips. And I'm actually joined by a fantastic uh, group of uh, guests for this session. I've got Simon Widmer from the Ellen MacArthur Foundation with me. I've got Rebecca Ford, um, who heads up the RSA Design Awards, and Kevin Shabazzi from Philips. Simon, uh, what is circular design? Um, you know, I get the question every year, so I, I try to improve every year. At this time, it's, um, um, it's, uh, it's, it's, I try to keep it to a minute, uh, if possible. Um, no, I, it's very simple. It's basically to redesign everything for a circular economy. So whether it's a product, a service, or a system, to understand like how can we meet the need that we all have, like user, user needs basically, um, within the context of a circular economy. And today, most of the things that we have around us, like whether it's a building, whether it's uh, clothes or, or um, uh, furniture or, or plastics bottles, they land up in, in landfills, um, they, they um, end up in incinerators. Uh, so the question is, how can we apply creative strategies to redesign them and make sure they never become waste in the first place? And um, um, while there's many avenues and many creative strategies, in the end, it all comes back to the three principles um, of designing out waste and pollution. Uh, and here, um, actually, we'll talk a bit more about that in, 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 uh, later in the session. But here, one, one great example is to, from the outset, think about how do your material flows actually, where do they travel after use and where do they, uh, how do they come back? So you want to make sure that you're not just dealing with waste when it arises, but from the outset, design it out. Uh, keeping products and materials in use, great example. One of the winners, actually, of the RSA Student Design Award, uh, Ellie Skelton, a toy for life. So how can a toy evolve over time? How can it be modular? How can you adapt it? And how can that be of most use as it evolves? And regenerate natural systems. Um, a good example is, is Materium. So using locally abundant materials, you probably have seen like the other this session. Um, we had Liz Corbin in the studio for our for the launch. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Um, so making sure that whatever we use is a nutrient and not waste, and it regenerates. So like those uh, materials, they actually are of benefit after use. Um, so yeah, I, in in a, in a nutshell, it's um, the three principles, and there's a lot of different strategies that we'll explore more. So there's this big thing of this big picture thing of going back to the beginning and not dealing with things at the end of pipe, and that's design is crucial for that. Yeah. Um, and I guess this is like a big picture view of what circular design is. But how might uh, a young designer watching or a young innovator watching how might they get started? What you know, where do you start? Mm. Um, so that was that was one of the the big questions for us when we started the design program at the foundation. Like, how can we help a large audience of of designers to get started easily? And, um, and when we started to work with IDEO uh, and, um, and, and leading universities on the circular design guide, we basically had that in mind. So having a tool that anybody can use uh, simply. Um, so obviously the... And that tool is the circular design guide, which is a website where there's a load of methods and all sorts of things that people can access freely available. Exactly. It's free. It's very easy to use. Um, and, and yeah, it's not just a tool, it's basically, and I have here a little prop uh, for you, Sepp. Um, it's basically also uh, downloadable workshops. And the program I run is the RSA Student Design Awards, which is a, a global competition that challenges um, university students and new graduates from all backgrounds and, and disciplines. You don't have to be studying a, a design subject to respond to some of the big societal challenges that we're facing in the world today. And uh, circular design or circular economy, I guess, is, is one of the this year's design briefs. How, I mean, what's the story behind how that's become a part of, of I guess, the RSA's output? Yeah, so we, we definitely see, you know, enabling the shift away from the, the linear economy, take, make, dispose, to a circular economy is one of the critical issues of our era. And we actually work in, in partnership with a lot of different organisations to develop our design challenges. And Philips is one of our, our long-term partners. And it's always a very collaborative process. So we'll look at the kind of issues that the RSA is concerned with and also the big priorities for our, 
our partners and for Philips, you know, this real commitment to a, a, a circular economy is one of the critical things that they're focused on. We've worked with Philips for, for many years now. And then this year, we had a new partnership formed with, with you guys, with Ellen MacArthur Foundation as well, and decided that actually applying circular design thinking to healthcare, emergency healthcare in particular, um, was a really interesting new area for a design challenge. It feels like the, uh, in, in some of the language around the RSA Design Awards, there's the, the systems thinking as part of it, as well mm. as the big issues. What, what, is that what kind of makes a little bit of a di distinction for you guys? Is that the, the element that you sort of try and zero in on? I think so. Um, there are a lot of different design competitions and competitions generally out there. Um, but I think uh, something that's different about the RSA is this focus on really complex systemic issues as as you say and that's something that the rsa is is concerned with generally we have um a phrase to uh, try and capture our model of change which we call think like a system and act like an entrepreneur and that's what we're wanting you know mm. um uh, students and the next generation to start doing through wrestling with the challenges in, in our design briefs why emergency healthcare i guess is is the broad question of why, why is that a compelling circular design brief well, maybe maybe to give a kind of background on Philips, many people on the call probably uh, think of Philips as a lighting company or a TV company. But a couple of years ago, we made a bold decision to focus on healthcare. So we we're, we're trying to improve the lives of 3 billion people a year on this uh, earth. And in order to reach that kind of massive scale and to spread access to care, um, you do need to kind of think differently. And um, uh, of course, that's bringing together something complicated like healthcare, which is which is not simple, and circular economy, which in itself also is not simple. And the intersection of the two is is um, is is uh, yeah, absurdly complex, I would guess, <laughs> for anyone. So to to simplify that, also we we started with the type of care which would be a little bit accessible to more people to to investigate emergency care. Emergency care has a large variation in acuity. So it can be people coming for emergency care who have uh, a life and death issue or just an urgent issue. But even though, despite all this variation, it's, it's pretty consistent. There are about five different phases you see. And the first is to identify, you know, who are you? What's wrong with you? Uh, the second is to triage. You know, what is the most appropriate care location for you? You know, should you be here or where should you be? How, how can we help you? Uh, third is to evaluate, you know, what's the most likely reason you have health issues? Um, you want to do that quickly and so that you can treat them. The, the third is, to, you know, what can we do immediately to improve your health? And last is disposition. Um, so what is the appropriate care, uh, appropriate place to continue treatment? Because you don't want to stay in an emergency department. You need to make way for others. Um, and, and the nature of emergencies that they're not predictable means that you have to look at it in a systemic way. I mean, where it occurs, what is going on? It could be anything from a heart attack to an accident. Um, and um, uh, you know, and that response needs to take place and requires resources as well. So, are those resources in the right place? Is the system able to act fast enough? Um, uh, is is uh, you know, do we have our um, our ability to cover all the emergencies that are going on? Those are some of the problems. In there. people are finding it a tough challenge, but also a rewarding one in terms of. Um, really wrestling with the complexity that, that Kevin's just outlined. I know people have found it really helpful using the design guide. I've had a lot of feedback on that. Um, one question that keeps coming up actually, which maybe Kevin could help to answer, is around, you know, obviously there's, uh, when it comes to medical equipment, especially usually you have a lot of clinical trials um, before you would uh, suggest implementing something and so uh, I've had some questions around how future focused solutions can be when perhaps uh, the equipment or the tech that, that, that students are looking at might not have been uh, proved proven yet. Um, so I don't know if you have any <laughs> thoughts on that Kevin. So un unproven tech. Yeah I mean I, I would probably say in response to that um, we are looking for genuinely future focused solutions and just right. do what you can, you know, speak to as many experts as you can and get a sense of the feasibility. And at least if you can show that, I think it's still worth if you've, you know, 
honed in on a real opportunity area that does involve some new tech that's not you know, brought to market yet, it's still worth proposing it. But I don't know if you have other thoughts, Kevin. <laughs> Right, I think I think that's uh, one of the key uh, things that make it difficult. Obviously, innovating in healthcare requires some care into how you do it, and uh, FDA approvals are just one way of making sure that we don't create harm to populations. Um, so, indeed, I think what Rebecca is uh, is saying is a good good idea. We were looking for the thinking, the thought behind it, and any way to kind of help prove or make steps is good. Uh, we're not necessarily looking for something we can put in the market uh, on Monday. Uh, so uh, yeah, I, I think, think also looking at the, the technology aspect and focusing on making a feasible technology may not actually um, address entirely the system mm -hmm. uh, aspect. So careful where you're placing your uh, details because it may actually uh, work well to prove that function, but did that function resolve the problem of access to care mm. and uh, and the resource dependency of care? That's those are two big themes that we end up talking about a lot. One is, you know, technology is a really fantastic tool, but um, you know, what how is it being used, and you know, is it? It's not a magic silver bullet. And uh, the other one is that circular economy and circular design is unproven. So if you're a business trying to justify switching to a new business model, or if you're um, trying to justify sourcing your materials from a completely new place, um, you know, that is, that is a, one of the challenges. Well, well we are committed to, uh, to our target uh, for, for 2020 of having 15% circular revenues and closing the loop on the, um, all professional medical equipment uh, by, uh, don't uh, quote me on this, 2025, I believe. Um, and that's where we're making, we're, we're really trying to make a lot of headway and, and, and we see a lot of gains there. Um, I would like to challenge us also to do all the consumer uh, products as well, which are, which are increasingly moving towards health, uh, consumer health products. Uh, those are the trickier ones. There's a lot more uh, products out on the market there and they're of, of lower value uh, compared to these larger medical equipment. And, and those, that's where you really face a lot of systemic issues as well. Um, what type of we products? We have to focus. Just to, just to give which types? Yeah. I what? mean, I mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> I will have colleagues coming to me after. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I'll just keep it open. I mean, uh, all products. of the consumer. Pardon me. Just consumer That's products. For example, yeah. you said it, not me. That's yeah. a great example of one which could be uh, redesigned, uh, thinking of circular economy in mind. Of course. That is, that is a challenge as well. It could have been the challenge this year for the RSA as well. Um, it's, it's a tough one because of things, the real, um, the real challenges of getting a toothbrush and a sonic air to, to everyone's home. That means it has to be affordable in today's system. And there are so many factors in the economy that are still linear. So um, that is a real practical challenge. How do you actually get affordable, um, uh, yeah, uh, now I'm pitching a different brief. Uh, but it, it's a fascinating <laughs> example because it's like, it's the question of, if you think about toothbrush, for example, you've got to think like the system that exists around that toothbrush, which is way more complex mm -hmm. than anyone would probably immediately think about, at least when I brush my teeth at night, I don't think about it. And there's, but there's also an element of acting like the entrepreneur and being really practical because it is a physical thing. It's an everyday product. Um, and how do you do it? Um, so if anyone wants to take that brief on, then uh, it sounds like Kevin That's is open to it. a separate brief. It. You can email me those we ideas. Did, we did run a brief last year with, um, with Unilever looking at applying circular design principles to fast-moving consumer goods. Good. Yeah, and Some the good. winner of that looked at the cosmetics industry, and she designed a refillable um, mascara. Um, and yeah, and she used the circular design guide yeah. as part of her solution yeah. and found that to be a brilliant tool and has since uh, connected with Simon. So. For any circular designers who have heard a bit today about the circular economy, heard a bit about the challenge that Philips have laid out, what's their next step? Where, where should they go? What should they do? They should go and read the brief and start tackling it. <laughs> and that is available. <laughs> That's on our website, RSA Student Design Awards. Google that and it will come up.